Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. A huge thanks to the developers for the review copy. Many of you will have seen the tourist and know of the developer Shinen Multimedia as the ever popular makers of the great Switch launch title Fast RMX. Two things of note about these guys. One, they have a history of creating games with outstanding performance on the Switch. And two, when making them, they focus on fun something that seems to so often become a secondary development focus these days. So, don your Hawaiian shirt and gaudy shorts because we're going on a vacation. Is it Bogner Regis or Ibiza? Let's find out. From a narrative perspective, the tourist takes a very hands-off emergent style, where the world tells you the tale as you progress. You play as a new visitor to Tourist Island and are soon corralled into helping a wise old gent to search for the all-elusive cause you've been tasked with finding. Why exactly? Well, he doesn't really give a great deal away, but he does hand you a few tour guides for other islands and off you go. There are a number of secondary tales that again are much more experiential than they are about bold overt narrative, like helping the elderly couple find a decent holiday location or following leads of an island that perpetually rains. It might not seem too engrossing, but this game has a special quality in terms of the narrative, that unusualness that a title like Little Big Adventure had, where the world and its inhabitants have a unique character all of their own. The gameplay is the bit you've probably been wondering most about, and I have to say, it's one of those games where clearly defining it doesn't really do it justice. For example, it starts out like a standard adventure, with some platforming thrown in as you collect coins around the initial island, but soon you'll be facing off against a bizarre snake-like creature, unclear whether it means you harm, but disturbed and threatened nonetheless. The islands themselves are lovingly crafted playgrounds, with many totally useless but nonetheless interactive areas and spots. It gives it a sense of life but also makes it a far more relaxing title during these times than I'd have imagined. And there's an ongoing task to use the camera you buy from the shop to take photos of these monuments as you visit the different locales, which you can then sell back to the shopkeeper. There is no main gameplay loop here, and that's really important and slightly a throwaway comment, but if you're at all fond of titles that merge several genres on the fly, you will, as I did, have an affinity with the game and feel refreshed by the developers not limiting themselves. One minute all will seem standard as you venture down in yet another monument tomb to search for the all-elusive cause you've been tasked with finding, and the next, you're rigging up the lighting at a beach party. flying an RC drone race, losing horribly at a surfing competition, spelunking in a mine, finding lost treasure, or just taking a stroll through these beautiful yet strangely dreamlike places. The platforming is also helped by a very solid set of controls but they aren't perfect. You can control the character with the left stick, with new abilities unlocked as you buy them from the shop, including a nice dash one that sees you tearing across the island. A double jump and some more interesting moves later on. Whether you're diving beneath the ocean to search for another monument entrance or grabbing ledges to reach those hidden coins, there's a real sense of exploratory fun here. that feels both rewarding and charming. Puzzles make up a large part of the game as well, and usually they take the form of environmental clues. Everything's very hands-off, and you're left to figure things out yourself. I won't pretend this doesn't mean there are some times when you'll be scratching your head as to how to solve certain ones, but it felt like the solutions were logical and rarely required more than a touch of lateral thinking. The platforming can be quite punishing, but an instant respawn and no actual health system means you're right back into the experience instantly to try again. I mentioned that the controls weren't perfect, and to be clear here, they're very responsive and tight, but during the platforming sections, the nature of the semi-isometric camera, even with its 180 degree rotation and zoom, do sometimes feel a touch limiting. Interestingly, for a game with no damage or health bar, there are a number of puzzle-based boss segments. And again, while most of these are simple enough, a couple of very frustrating ones were there just by design.
The tourist can be surprisingly demanding on the player when you stroll casually into the arcade on one island, buy your play tickets, an amazing touch by the way, and then sit down at the fast arcade machine to try and beat the local Billy Big Time's best scores, I won't lie when I say that I thought I was going to absolutely smash it. I didn't. I was rubbish and I lost all my money before leaving the arcade and vowing to return when I had a little more cash. I swear this was me at age 10. That difficulty applies to all the smaller tasks and minigames and it made me respect the game far more. It could so easily have been a simple cutesy platform adventure, but it isn't. It's like the aforementioned Little Big Adventure 2 in its character and feel and as you complete tasks which are handily logged on a per island basis, it's easy to keep track of the various missions and tasks you currently have ongoing and the tour guides give a sense of progression with the dinky boat allowing for quick travel between them whenever you choose. At about the halfway point in the game there is a rather large shift but I've intentionally avoided that so as not to spoil it. Needless to say the world and its secrets are your own to find and the shift both visually and in the mood is impressive. Gameplay is surprising, that's the best and most concise way I can describe it. Sometimes frustrating but then inspired with so many strange and unusual inclusions as to keep a large grin on your face. Minor frustrations aside, I've enjoyed it a lot. Gameplay scores 18 out of 20 while the controls are tight and they score 17 out of 20. Now Shinnan don't do bad performance. They specifically made 60 frames per second the first target of the game. The butter experience you'll have here is a testament to it. Now despite the voxel-esque aesthetic of the game, it has an incredibly capable engine and lighting system draped over a world filled with realistic physical limits. Bump into a railing and watch as it bends or pass through a gate as it realistically hinges back and forth. And a few minutes of searching for the diamonds in the cave all reveal how capable and moreover beautiful it can be. Each island with their real life equivalent and name and given a lot of love and attention. Small details litter every area. Dashing through the sand or just stopping to join in with a dance party, it oozes quality. There are the occasional quirky moments. I think my capture card went haywire but when I was in the mines, the physics of the minecarts went crazy and did that mad dance these havoc based games often do. Other than that though, performance and visuals are top notch and while it won't be to everyone's taste, the shallow depth of field gives the world a toy box feeling that suits it perfectly. Special credit has to go to the arcade, what a seamless and fluid implementation that is. Audio is initially quite muted, with no environmental music of sorts and it relies on the sounds of the islands to add to the character. This changes though with the ambient and sound palette very much matching what's going on on screen. I liked that coming across a musical piece felt like a reward. But I do think at times it's a touch too sparse. The weather plays a large part in the texture of islands and you can almost feel the rain hammering down. Visuals I really love, they scored for me 19 out of 20, while the audio is decent but not standout, it scores 16 out of 20. The game costs £17.99, €19.99 or $19.99. There are tons of secrets, but the pace of this one and length are hard to judge. I've put in around 12 to 15 hours already and haven't come close to seeing everything just yet. Shinen want the game to be played at your own pace. I will say, don't go in expecting an on rails guided tour here. This is a self catering holiday for sure and spending two to three hours just chilling in the arcades is absolutely possible. Hopefully we'll see a physical release at some point but judging by the forebear we didn't see that with Fast RMX on Switch which was a little odd as it was on the Wii U. This is a real gem for my money and value scores 18 out of 20. Overall then, The Tourist is a far more accomplished experience, albeit a very unusual and quirky one than I expected. The developers aim to create an adventure that would surprise the player at every turn and I think they have. Some minor irritations like one very annoying early boss aside, you won't find anything quite like this game. It scores a switch up score of 88%. A big thanks to all of the patrons and let me know what you thought of this review down in the comments. And as always, for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see you!